uh, generative adversarial networks. So in this section, we're going to take a look at what are generative adversarial networks, how to be train and run our first GAN networks. We're also going to see an overview of the most popular GAN architecture in the literature, so this is known as a deep convolutional uh, GAN, so DC GAN. And finally, we're going to see a set of techniques to make GAN work better. So our first video is going to be an introduction to generative adversarial networks. In this video, we're going to have a look at what are generative adversarial networks. So they're going to be abbreviated as a GANs. Uh, why do we use them? And some successful application of GANs on real world data. Keep in mind that uh, most of the application are actually very focused on the research uh, because actually GAN is a very a new domain of application. I think the first paper related to GAN was from Ian Goodfellow in 2015 or 14, but something like this. So the concept is like, so we're going to work in an adversarial setup. So the concept is if you want to get better at something, say chess, what would you do? Um, you would compete with an opponent better than you, so you would learn from him. Then you would analyze what you did wrong, what he did right, and think on what could you do to beat him in the next game. So generative adversarial networks are based on this concept. Uh, so we're going to see a first definition about uh, generative adversarial networks. So the idea behind is that you have not one but two networks, a generator, G, and a discriminator, D. And those two networks are going to compete against each other. So what's the purpose of the generator? So the generator is going to produce candidate images, or let's just call it fake data. And it's going to pass it as a discriminator. So the purpose of the discriminator is to be classified between real data and fake data. The purpose of the generator is to fool the discriminator, is to become as good as possible to generate image that looks like real data. And the discriminator uh, wants to be able to see if uh, this data is real or fake. So it wants to increase this accuracy on the binary task of whether the image is real or fake. So what we see at the end is that the generator learns to make a data uh, that actually looks like a real data and basically the discriminator cannot even see the difference. So it becomes indistinguishable. And uh, this is the end of the task. So when the discriminator is like, okay, if you give me an image, I so there's basically a 50% probability that is real or fake data, I don't know. Uh, so when it's close to random, it means that it's over as a, a generator. Uh, has found a way to learn how to make data that is uh, very, very good and uh, very, very realistic. So on uh, this uh, diagram, uh, we can see that uh, we have our generator, our discriminator, so both network we're talking about. So the input is a generator, is just uh, a random vector, and the output will be an image. So in that case, uh, the generator uh, wants to learn to output uh, digits. So we're dealing with the MNIST dataset. And also, we're also considering uh, the real data. So let's say 50% of the time, um, so we give a real data, and 50% of the time, we give an image uh, generated from the generator. And basically, the discriminator, um, its purpose is to see if this image is real or fake. So it's to increase this probability of uh, randomness, so 50-50. And the purpose of the generator is to output image that looks as good as images from real data. So this is basically what the generative adversarial networks are. So about the motivation. So why do we want to consider this new approach? So one motivation is a way to generate images that look real. The second thing is like it's another approach to deep learning. So for example, um, so you may have heard about AlphaGo. So I too, so I was talking about AlphaGo in, in the volume one. So this is basically an algorithm released by Google uh, learning how to play the Go game. And they released another version based on adversarial networks that can 
actually learn from nothing and this is uh, called AlphaGo Zero so basically networks they learn how to play by competing each other and also one a good motivation is uh, from Yen Lequin so he's uh, now directors at uh, Facebook research and he said that uh, GANs and the variations that are now being proposed is the most interesting idea in the last 10 years in machine learning in my opinion GANs are actually a pretty big big thing and the research around generative adversarial network is very active at the moment oh now some application of generative adversarial networks so one application is that uh, you can actually predict the next frame in a video so this is done in this paper uh, so i advise you to have a look at this paper uh, maybe go through the introduction at least the conclusion uh, because this is a very interesting paper and what we can see is that when we look at the image so when we just use a convolutional network with the msc so mean square errors uh, as loss we can see that we don't actually uh, get the details right because the msc tends to smooth the result so this is actually not what we want because it's uh, very blurry uh, the output that we can get so and uh, it turns out that using an adversarial loss it, it is actually pretty good at capturing details Another application is to increase the resolution of an image. So it's a way to generate images of uh, super high resolution. So this is called upsampling and uh, generative adversarial networks are actually very good at capturing details. Like I was saying, so this paper deals with this approach. So there's another very similar approach uh, made by NVIDIA Research. This is exactly the same thing so uh, generative adversarial networks can actually generate uh, images of uh, uh, celebrities so faces of celebrities so more details are so in this paper uh, you can also do an, a mapping image to image translation so you get an input and uh, you can get an output so for example if you want to label a, a street scene so you basically give the labels uh, so this is on the top left corner so you can uh, so you can actually uh, sketch what you want so so let's say uh, you can uh, sketch a street this is in purple you can sketch uh, cars and so on and so on and then uh, you push that through a generative adversarial networks and then it can uh, generate something that looks uh, realistic uh, you can also go from edges to a photo, you can also go from day to night, uh, gray to color, label to facade, and so on and so on. And one also very interesting application is a text to image synthesis. So you type something, so it's caption, and uh, you can generate an image uh, from this caption. And with general adversarial networks, it works very, very good. So for example, on the top left corner, they said this moles a bird has a pink breast and crown and black primaries and secondaries. So in that case, the network uh, is able to generate some image that uh, look like what we want. So the flowers, petals that are bright pinkish purple with white stigma. So it's the uh, same.